I, I'm from Portland, and uh, so I, I put put these buildings on top of this Ween album, and then this is the the closure logo, um, which is a yin yang and a, a lambda, uh, which is. Uh, And um, I don't know why you guys would want to know about closure. I really wasn't expecting many people to show up because, I mean, as you can see, it, it's only the the third highest paying technology according to the the Stack Overflow 2018 Developer Survey. Uh, that's uh, that's in the U.S. It's, it's actually yeah, it's like Erling and Scala are tied for first. So. So closure is technically second, and then uh, uh -oh. the table <coughs> fell out again or something. Yeah. Then uh, in the U.S. it's uh, similar. <coughs> closure is uh, right behind F sharp and O camel, but that's worldwide. And uh, with uh, in, in case anyone doesn't know, uh, which uh, uh, I, I like to um, try to keep a nice balance between um, in, insulting your intelligence and uh, uh, insulting you by assuming that, that you know too much. <laughs> and so uh, Clojure is a, a dialect of Lisp that runs on the Java virtual machine. And uh, when, when I first heard about it, I thought that sounded kind of wonky. Um, but then uh, when, when I actually tried it and found out more about it, 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 I just became happier and happier with my decision. And uh, this was something that blew my mind when I saw it. This is from the same uh, Stack Overflow developer survey um, where they talk about um, the languages uh, in, in terms of uh, contribution to open source. And uh, it says that over 70% of the developers who work with Rust, Julia, and Clojure contribute to open source. And uh, so I thought this was hugely relevant. You know, because what, what that means is that it's uh, among the, the highest languages in terms of open source contribution. Um, There's a, a guy named Daniel Compton who uh, started uh, Closure is Together, which is an organization that uh, what they do is they they fund open source projects that uh, that the community uh, there, there's a committee that decides you know what um, are important you know like infrastructure <coughs> projects that uh, are critical you know for the development of, of a new language, um, because we're all talking about how do we get you know more money into open source, you know, how, because you know we need to uh, give developers an incentive, you know, to to keep maintaining projects because they they might you know start something and then move on to something else and then you know things start to break and then nobody knows what to do so. What this does is um, every three months um, they pick uh, it. It's so far it's been uh, uh, two projects you know, per uh, uh, three month cycle, and um, they uh, it's been, it's been a really really encouraging kind of kind of thing. So this is uh, Lisp was um, a language that I started studying uh, from this book. This is called the Wizard Book. Um, has anyone read this? Or, or I, um, I I heard about it. I was reading some thread, and uh, they said that this was like the Bible of computer programming. And uh, so I was like, oh, this. 
guy seems to know what he's talking about. Let me check that out. And um, so this was my introduction to Lisp. And what uh, what this this was a, a book that was put together by MIT. <laughs> That's what it looks like. And uh, it's been uh, uh, actually uh, it was part of their computer science 101 course, uh, which is probably the most famous computer science course ever. Um, they chose Lisp because it's incredibly easy to teach. It takes like two minutes, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, show you that there's, you know, the, the syntax is just, uh, well, it stands for lots of irritating stupid parentheses. And uh, everyone complains about it all the time. And I think they're all crazy because I love it. <laughs> it uh, you, you don't need to know any order of operations. Uh, PEMDAS just becomes P. <laughs> you know, you, you, uh, there's, it, it gets rid of any ambiguity. And uh, what it is is it's like a, it's like a sentence. You know, in every set of parentheses, the first item is the verb, you know, what are we, or the function, in other words, you know, what are we doing, and then followed by what are we doing it to. And uh, so it, uh, it allows them to, um, to get right to, you know, the point of, uh, you know, teaching the fundamentals without, you know, getting bogged down, to, you know, uh, they would have, I guess it would have been C at the time. Or, or <laughs> And um, the, the problem was, is it's always been a language that's been restricted, you know, to academia. Um, so while I really enjoyed reading this book, you know, it, I didn't really see any, you know, I was, I was learning Python at the time. Uh, because, uh, you know, that uh, is what's used in the industry. You know, but, you know, I... Uh, Lisp had this little place in my heart that, you know, when I found out about Clojure, I, I realized that it's a language that is specifically designed to avoid bad programming. Uh, it, things just aren't possible. You know, he, he uh, Rich Hickey, the, the designer of Clojure, used to design... Um, schedule a uh, broadcast uh, automation <coughs> software and he, uh, he he would have to design a system that would you know make sure that no song would you know by the same artist would get played within the uh, certain amount of time or else somebody's going to say hey all you guys do is play Elton John you know uh, but then they would have this thing called Two for Tuesdays, where they play two songs by every artist, you know, back to back. And he said that just threw a monkey wrench into the entire system that he spent all this time designing. So he said when he sat down to write a language, the first thing that he wanted to get rid of was any Two for Tuesdays. <laughs> and... Uh, so, what what it is is, um, it's it's a language that it, that uh, that runs on the Java virtual machine. Uh, so, it was pretty much targeted for Java programmers uh, at the time, and uh, I was I was not to me that was a negative thing. Um, so I didn't want anything to do with Java, you know. So I was like, eh, you know, what what use would I have for that? You know, but um, this does anyone know what this is? Flying spaghetti. <laughs> and and what would that have to do with bad programming? <coughs> The, the dreaded spaghetti code. <laughs> oh, <man>. oh, <laughs> nice. 
What's wrong with this program? Good luck fixing a bug. It'll it'll run just fine, right? I, I mean, I, what's what's wrong with it? Once the person the, wrote that leaves, we're all doomed. <laughs> So th this is a rather bold statement that is on the closure.org website. Mutable stateful objects are the new spaghetti code. And um, the, the reason is uh, that there is no such thing as an object. As this famous philosopher said, no man can step into the same river twice. It's really because there's no such thing as a river. It, it's all in here. What, what we're calling a river is just a place where there's water at one point in time, and then at another point in time, there, there's other water there. But there's no such thing as a river. It's not a thing. It's a mental construct that we apply to a succession of values that change over time uh, as a way to understand the world. But you can't have logic on top of rivers. And we're trying to, to write software that makes decisions how can you do that if you never know when you're going to get a consistent value? And the philosopher Raptor says, ooh, he just said a deepity. Now, it, it's a closure tradition to have a definition slide. It's, it's mandatory. Now, if you're giving a closure talk, you, you look up a word in the dictionary, and you're rolling. And so I figured I would define deepity. It was coined by Daniel Dennett. It's a, it's a profound seeming but superficial equivocation. It, uh, on one level, it, it means nothing. But on another level, it would be completely earth shattering if it was true. <laughs> but is that really a deepity? Now, I, I, I wanted to just, uh, the, in the, on the tin, you know, when I described the, the presentation, uh, I referred to parasitic programming languages. And this was um, a, a term coined by David Nolan, who um, was giving a talk, and he, he said he was going to call it symbiotic programming languages, but that he thought this sounded like scarier and that it would, you know, uh, get people riled up. <laughs> and um, but what it is, is it's a language that is designed to be hosted. Now, in, instead of reinventing the wheel, starting from scratch, you know, uh, it allows us to, uh, to share the, the memory model of the Java virtual machine. And what, what I came to realize is that it, it's okay to hate Java uh, and still use the Java virtual machine. Um, not only that, but um, Clojure was, uh, it, it's um, in, I think, 2012, it, um, they, they made Clojure script, which actually, uh, it's transpiled to, uh, to JavaScript, um, which I thought, was, I thought was kind of interesting. Um, you know, then, um, you know, because <coughs> it's a, that, that's a platform that you know, has not only, uh, you know, the, the reach, you know, at, it, to get into everyone's pocket, <coughs> You know, in everyone's browser, which is like the the new operating system, and uh, 
but it uh, in, in in a lot of those places JavaScript is the only thing it has you know total exclusivity and uh, whether that's a, a good or a bad thing <laughs> but this is a jumping spider I, I just wanted to throw some scary stuff in here you know, to uh, lull you all into a state where it seems like I know what I'm talking about <laughs> um, but this is also a jumping spider however it it looks it looks like an ant it's a it, it's a special family of uh, arachnids that uh, are uh, morphologically similar to ants and what uh, what they do is uh, you know, this is it's a, a very um, advanced risk management strategy that uh, it, that nature designed you know to avoid predators and uh, it's a, it's a good analogy to um, the the trend of, of a hosted language and uh, this this was before uh, re recently there's been kind of a kind of an upsurge in uh, you know with rust and swift and go that with system program programming languages but uh, there there's also a trend of of hosted languages that seem to have uh, you know some clear <coughs> advantages uh, Closure is a language that was designed for functional programming, which um, it, it's it's a tricky uh, it's a tricky concept you know, because uh, how do you, how do you define it? So oh wait, what happened to my? <coughs> That that's usually what you get, <laughs> you know, uh, programming with functions, right? Uh, what that uh, is pretty simple, right? Um, now, it's it's been a, a very academic language, you know. So, you know, if you uh, any definition that you would get, you know, would be very academic, and uh, so this guy. Uh, Eric Norman is, he's currently writing a book. He, uh, he runs Purely Functional TV, and uh, he actually teaches closure for a living, um, just on uh, doing instructional videos. And he's actually the guy who um, is responsible for me even knowing about it. I, I heard him on the, does anyone know the, the Programming Throwdown podcast? It's a, I, I highly recommend it, you know, for anyone that, you know, is like a language, a language geek, you know, these guys uh, you know, have been doing it for years, and uh, so they had, uh, they had Eric Norman on, because they, they did an episode on Lisp, they, they like to review languages and stuff, and they got a lot of hate mail, you know, from, from Lispers. <laughs> You know that all of a sudden came out of the woodwork, you know, and said, "Hey, you, you didn't even mention closure." And so they said, "Oh, well, what, what can we do about that?" Um, so they got Eric on, and uh, he's the one that that convinced me to uh, to give it a try. And he's he's writing a book right now called "A, a Theory of Functional Programming," where he's he's addressing this this very issue. Of uh, we we need a proper definition. Uh, the the one thing that we can seem to uh, to start with is that it um, lambda calculus, which uh, I I was uh, I was a horrible <coughs> math student, um, but um, so that the idea that I'm doing something that has to do with lambda calculus makes me feel really smart. You know, e even though I, I, I don't even know if I could really explain what that means. You know, but what, uh, what it actually is, 
Let me see. I'm just, uh... Oh, you know what? Oh, this is an older version of this slideshow. Anyway, uh, I, I put in a bunch of pictures of Turing machines. Uh, and one of them was made of Legos. <laughs> um, but, um... Yeah, Alan Turing, um, you know, back in, uh, what was that, the 30s? Uh, uh, when they were still trying to come up with a solid theory of computation, you know, to uh, figure out what, what can be computed and what, what are problems that are just uh, beyond the scope of, you know, what uh, you know, can be solved by computation. And um, the... Uh, the Turing machine was kind of like um, a, a physical model of this thing with uh, with tape that you know would uh, you know in in theory I can't imagine how that would actually work you know but uh, you know technically you know, uh, you know that could solve any problem that you know in any language any of the languages uh, that are referred to as Turing complete. You know, are uh, you know, able to um, do any computations that a Turing machine would, and um, the um, Alonzo Church uh, developed the lambda calculus, which was a mathematical formal formalism that uh, described, you know, by way of mathematical functions, you know, the the same. Uh, the same theory of computation, which became known as the Church-Turing uh, thesis. How's that for a deepity? <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. a big uh, a, a big part of closure is um, immutability, which is is kind of a kind of an interesting thing, you know. How how do you even make a loop? You know, if uh, you know, all all of Clojure's data structures are I immutable, which means once you define a variable, uh, you can't change it. Um, which it's like what? What? Why, why would I want to use a language that doesn't let me do things? Well, it, it's because I, I wanted to avoid bad programming. Now, is that, has anyone ever seen bad programming? <laughs> I, uh, I, I was fascinated by, by this topic, and uh, you know, that's what led me on this journey, was uh, I wanted to figure out is there such a thing as bad programming and you know, is it something that can be uh, you know uh, avoided <laughs> and um, so the way that closure does this is uh, he um, he took a paper uh, by Phil Bagwell uh, called ideal hash trees uh, where he describes uh, a um, it's it's a hash map that is uh, based on trees, and um, the creator of Clojure uh, figured out a way to to make them persistent, you know, which um, allows you to copy an entire data structure without copying the entire thing, and uh, by using uh, what's called structural sharing. You know, so you know, let's say you had uh, you know this this data structure over here, and then you wanted to, you know, add some other things, you know, like, uh, you know, these guys over here. You know, it would, it would be very inefficient to have to copy the same thing over again. You know, but what it does is it just, uh, it just adds a new node here, and it just automatically works. <laughs> so you uh, are allowed to, to, sh to, to share the structure. And uh, what, I, what I wanted to do was actually um, 
Looks like we're about out of time already. But uh, I, I wanted to show you guys a little uh, Minesweeper game that I made, which... Let's see, how do I get the... Can I get a terminal on this, or... Uh, Anyway, uh, th these are just some websites that um, that I put together, you know, for resources, you know, in case anyone wants to learn more about Closure. Um, Foreclosure is a website that um, guides you through right from first principles, you know, uh, just. Um, It, uh, it use, uses cones, which are, um, I, I think it was uh, the ruby cones. Uh, and uh, I think there's Haskell cones, too, um, which uh, it's just a, a fancy name for fill-in-the-blank exercises. Uh, and uh, so yeah, it's, it's prefix notation, you know, which means you have the operator or the function first, you know, which this is the equality function. And uh, it's, um, it, it's equality in terms of value uh, as opposed to identity, um, which, uh, I don't know how to explain that, <laughs> but uh, there's something that, uh, does anyone know what could be equal to true? How, how about <laughs> so I just nested in another expression that one is not equal to zero which would evaluate to true. And so true would be equal to true. And it just spirals out from there. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's beautiful because it just, uh, just, that's really all that you need to know. But so <coughs> foreclosure, uh, they use a lot of material from the Project Euler website. Does anyone know about that? It's a great way to learn languages. You know, it starts out with, uh, you're doing like fizz buzz, like uh, finding all the multiples of threes and fives and uh, learning the Fibonacci sequence. And uh, so, um, yeah, these guys did a really nice project. Uh, and so that's where I would recommend starting out. It, uh, it, there's like 150 questions. It goes all the way up into doing like quines. You know. <laughs> Emacs is kind of the unofficial closure uh, text editor. You know, if if you use Emacs, that's cool. Um, <coughs> You'll, you'll have a lot of good company. Um, I, I actually don't because I run junk computers and <coughs> Emacs is, you know, as they say, it's a really good operating system. You know, if only it had a decent text editor. Uh, and uh, yeah, closure for the brave and true. It teaches you how to make a loop by making a function that will go na 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 Batman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, uh, need I say more? Yes. <laughs> and uh, and it's, uh, it, it's, free, it's free to read online. You know, uh, 
the author D Daniel Higginbotham did a, a great service to the community by making this book available. And uh, oh yeah, Maria Maria Cloud is a, for people that like to learn languages. Uh, there are people uh, visually oriented people, you know, who like uh, like to work with shapes and stuff. Uh, it's a live coding environment. You know, it's all in in the browser. Um, where you get to play with code and see immediate feedback, you know, uh, uh, you know, where you're just playing with shapes and colors and, and things like that. I, that's not really my style, uh, but um, for a lot of people, you know, do like to learn that way, and it's it's really important because you know what what other medium <coughs> is there. You know, where you don't get immediate feedback when you're constructing something. You know, it's, uh, it, it, it's like we're trying to program through, uh, through a wall. And uh, then uh, Zach Talman just released this book, uh, Elements of Closure, which is uh, a parody of the, the old Elements of Style book. Uh, and uh, and then there was elements of programming style, and uh, this is uh, uh, he he wanted to write the ideal second book, you know, for closure, you know, for people that are, um, and this just came out, you know, and it's it's not free, you know, it uh, it's uh, uh, suggested thirty five uh, twenty five dollar minimum, and uh, I uh, I definitely plan on reading it. But um, he he really um, he once once he started uh, working you know, in closure you know, for long enough that he started teaching closure in the workplace. He started stumbling whenever he would have to um, explain like what what. Uh, What's the idiomatic way to do this? You know, what's a, what's a good uh, what what is a good abstraction? Uh, is a a really tough question. And so he has he has actually a whole chapter uh, just about names. You know, because you know, as as we might have heard, you know, naming things is one of the one of the two or the two and a half. Uh, hard problems in computer science. And he has a whole chapter on just uh, abstraction, you know, and where he, he tried to figure out what makes a, a, go a good abstraction, which was an extremely difficult task for him. And this was a this was my little Minesweeper game that I made. It was the first thing that, uh, first thing that I coded, coded in Clojure. And where I, I, I didn't even know what I was doing, but I, for some reason I wanted to play Minesweeper, and, and my internet was gone. So I had to make it myself. <laughs> and uh, it, it was the first experience I ever had of like, oh, well... Maybe I'll just do this, and maybe I'll do it. Oh, my God, it works. Wow, I can't believe this works. <laughs> and uh, you know, if, if you guys have had that experience, you know, then, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? <laughs> when, when something works. <laughs> Thank you. And some, uh, th this is something that I've really been nerding out on lately. Is uh, this language called MAL, which stands for Make a Lisp. It, it was uh, designed by uh, a, clo a closure developer. It was inspired by this language called Gherkin, which was a Lisp in Bash. And he just. Uh, so he 
started thinking, what, uh, what other weird language could I try to make a lisp in? And uh, he had actually made a lisp in uh, GNU make, uh, in the, the macro language, you know, where it's just completely, uh, you know, it, it's, it's magic. And uh, it kind of caught on. And today there are actually 72 implementations of MAL, the make a list language. Um, you, you can find that on GitHub. And uh, so you can pick your favorite language or a language that you want to learn and actually make a, lang a list that is very much like Clojure, you know, which has a lot of the same properties. Um, and uh, some people say that that is how you really learn programming would be to make a programming language. And, and uh, that's it, in any language besides Lisp, you know, it would be uh, you know, something completely you know, out of the range of most people. But you can actually write a Lisp interpreter quite easily. And um, so, yeah, I would definitely recommend, I, I would recommend this as a way to learn closure would be to make a language like closure in a language that, that you already know. And uh, so thanks a lot. <laughs>